And there's a difference in the Bible between pleasure on the one hand and joy on the other. He that loveth pleasure is a poor man, said the writer of Proverbs. Paul wrote to Timothy and said, but he that liveth in pleasure is dead, she that liveth in pleasure is dead while she lives. You're living physically, but dead spiritually. Your heart is dead toward God. You can be a dead man. I've just written a book on death called Facing Death. It'll come out this fall. And I've gone into some of these things. I've gone into such things as euthanasia and suicide and all of these things that, are, that people are talking about today. What's right and what's wrong and how do we get through these things? The Bible says in 2 Timothy, Paul wrote, we're lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God. Pleasure are the things that appeal to our flesh and our lust. Joy is something else. It runs deep. And no matter what the weather, what the climate, what the troubles, what the difficulties are, there's a joy because the joy is produced by the Holy Spirit supernaturally in you. So that the whole world can fall in on you and there's a joy that's always there. We have about 15 or 20 springs on our place at home. And all of our springs seem to go dry, but there's one that never wavered. And that's the way with joy. No matter what happens and how the drought may come, it's always there, produced by the Spirit of God. But pleasure is different. That's temporary. It only lasts a short season. What about you? Blessed are you, said Jesus, when men shall hate you and when they shall separate you from their company and shall reproach you and cast out your name as evil for the Son of Man's sake. Rejoice ye in that day and leap for joy, for behold, your reward is great in heaven, for in like manner did they the Son of Man. And they did the same thing to the fathers and the prophets. He says, when you have suffering for Jesus' sake and somebody makes fun of you at school, leap for joy. Be joyful about it. You're doing it for Jesus' sake. But rather rejoice because your names are written in heaven. Is your name written in heaven? If it is, rejoice. If it's not, you better weep until you do find Christ. These things have I spoken unto you that my joy might remain in you and that your joy might be full. You can have Christ's joy. Do you have his joy? My brethren, count it all joy when you fall into different temptations and trials. Moses cho chose the joy of following God rather than all the pleasures of Egypt because Moses was heir to the throne of Egypt. Many great things Moses did in Egypt. A mighty man, he gave it all up to follow God out into the desert and to go with the despised people that were the slaves in Egypt. Then there's Jesus. The Bible says, tempted in all points like as we are, yet without sin. That the devil took him into the wilderness and tempted him three times. And Jesus was hungry. He hadn't eaten 40 days and 40 nights. He was tired. He was thirsty. Yes, but you said he was God. He was different. Oh, no. He had divested himself of all those supernatural powers at that moment. He met the devil just like you do as a man. And the devil said, if you're the son of God, command these stones and turn them into bread. You can feed the whole world. There'll be no hunger in the world. You can solve all the social problems in the world right now, Jesus. You do that. And did you know that Jesus never argued with him? He never debated him. All he did was quote scripture. He said, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. And then the second temptation came and he said, if thou be the son of God, cast thyself down, for it is written, he shall give his angels charge concerning thee, and in their hands they shall bear thee up. You see, the devil had said, jump out, make a big spectacle, and people will believe. You don't have to go to the cross. You don't have to die on the cross as you're planning to do. To save the world, you can do it, and they'll all believe when they see the angels catching you in midair. But Jesus said, it is written again, thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. Then the third temptation was, all these things will I give you if you'll fall down and worship me. He said, look at the world, all the world, all the oil, all the gold, all the power in the world is yours. And Jesus didn't dispute with him that he didn't have the power to offer it because he's called the God of this world, the prince and power there, the prince of this world. The devil has tremendous power, tremendous authority, and tremendous wealth. And he can offer you everything there is if you'll just worship him a little bit. Just nod your head and say, all right, devil, I'll go with you a little way anyway. Jesus didn't do that. He said, get behind me, Satan. It's written, thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shalt thou serve. So the Bible says after those three temptations, the devil left him and the angels came and helped him. 
Note those three things. Jesus quoted scripture. He was filled with the Spirit. He was in the will of God. Are you willing to say tonight, no to the temptations of the devil and yes to the call of Christ who tells you, repent of your sins, that means to change your way of living, follow me. Oh, but you say, Billy, I'm a member of the church and I've been baptized and I've been confirmed. Yes, that's a wonderful thing, but it'd be wonderful if you would reconfirm your confirmation. It would be wonderful if you would rededicate yourself to the things that were promised at baptism and at confirmation. It would be wonderful to come and say, I want to rededicate myself to you, Lord. Or for some of you, as 30 some percent did last night, will say, I'm receiving you for the first time. I really want to come to Christ now. I want my sins forgiven. I don't want to take a chance of dying without God. You know Christ? Have you received him? You say, Billy, what do I have to do? Three things. First, be willing to change your ways, change your mind. That's called repentance in the Bible. The second is by faith you receive Christ. You don't work for it. You don't buy it. It's a free gift and you receive it. And thirdly, you're willing to follow him. Bible reading, prayer, witnessing, living, letting love shine through your life. That's what it means to follow Christ. That's what it means to say no to the things the devil would like for you to follow. I want Christ in my heart. I want to know. I want to be sure. I want to rededicate my life to Him. I want a new power in my life, a new joy in my life. I want forgiveness of my past mistakes and failures. I want to start on a new road tonight. 